Okay, good to see everybody. Um, you know, coming off a great victory, obviously, against Wake Forest and uh, a great celebration with Donovan McNabb back in town. And uh, it's just great to see uh, his face after the game and after the weekend and hear his comments on, uh, you know, really having an enjoyable experience back at Syracuse. And then you look back 2005, we uh, had an opportunity to honor another great player in our history in Wilmot Sadat Singh. Uh, much has been said about this coming weekend and uh, Maryland doing the right thing uh, and trying to right a wrong that was extremely ugly many years ago. And um, uh, we're happy to be a part of that. Uh, you know, a Syracuse, uh, a young Syracuse player, 75, 76 years ago, that didn't have an opportunity to play because of the color of his skin. And for, uh, you know, both uh, Maryland and Syracuse to take the time and honor him, it, it's the right thing to do. And, uh, you know, you look back and there's ugly times behind you and you try to not make the same mistakes as you move forward. And uh, it was an ugly time in our country. And it's just, uh, like I said, it's just great that uh, they're fixing something that was just so ugly many years ago. So uh, with that, any questions you have going into the Maryland game? <clears throat> Yeah, you know, Randy played here. His wife was just inducted into, uh, you know, uh, our Hall of Fame, basically. Uh, and, uh, you know, so their family's given a lot to Syracuse. I don't personally know Randy real well. You know, I had a chance to coach against him. Uh, they had some good uh, UConn teams before he moved on to Maryland. So we look forward to uh, heading out there and battling him. Them coming off the bye week, they've had a lot of time to prepare for us, so I'll be interested to see what what, uh, what they do and you know what type of things uh, maybe they adjust to. I know they have personnel back. You know the quarterback's going to be back, <coughs> ready to go. Uh, from what I hear, um, you know uh, I know they lost a couple wide receivers that were very good football players, but the young kids that they, uh, they replaced with them have done a nice job, and uh, you know we'll have our hands full when we go to College Park. Coach, looking at your defensive line and, and the step, you know what Isaiah Johnson's done to step up, also Jay Bromley and the rest of the line, what can you say about what they've worked to do and how successful they've been to help you out up front? Yeah, you know, it has to be that next man in approach as, as you have injuries. And, uh, you know, it was good to see, um, you know, Isaiah, we call him Zeke, uh, get in there and, and uh, make a couple plays. Um, but most importantly, I think we have leadership in that room, starting with Jay Bromley. And, you know, Jason, he's a kid that when we, when, he, when we first got here, the thing we loved about him, the first week of practice was just his work ethic. And I see, it seems like it was yesterday. And um, the thing about Jason that I've loved the most is he's never changed. You know, that consistent work ethic and, and working hard to do what uh, his coaches have asked has been there since day one. And I think that as a role model in that room, those young guys, Isaiah included, can really learn lessons from uh, that type of player in front of them. Mark? Do you expect Maryland to play better than they did last four I'd be guessing, Mark. Anticipation or something like that? No, I mean, not necessarily. They put up good numbers. They have 430 uh, yards of offense a game. It's a pretty good number, especially considering they've had a lot of injuries. Uh, when I spoke to George on Tuesday, I asked him, you know, what, what contributed to the lack of reps for Jeremiah against Wake Forest? And he said part of it was other guys stepping up, and part of it was basically that Jeremiah wasn't working hard enough in practice. Is that something that you've seen as well, that he needs to step it up? We have good kids at the wide, uh, wide receiver position. As a group, they've done a good job working hard, and, and the guys that we think gave us the best opportunity to win will play. And, uh, you know, it goes to, it, you know, it goes into the competi uh, competition mode. You know, ability is, you know, ability alone will get you fired, you know, as a, as, as a coach, as a player. Um, I love that wide receiver core because they do compete. They do compete every day in practice. And, uh, you know, that's why you see Grizzly esteem. You know, he put his, he's put his head down and worked and continually worked off the field as well to uh, learn how to play the game the way we expect it. That competition, that's all part of competition. And we're going to put the best guys on the field that work the hardest in a consistent manner. And guys I think we can uh, win with. But I will say this too, Jeremiah had a good week of practice and you know, there's good competition going on with that group. Yeah. 
Coach, on the flip side, with the secondary, you've had to deal with some injuries and some yeah. rotation. What can you say about where they're at so far this season? They're and working going at on the road? It. Yeah, they're working at it. I thought, you know, in the last three games, two of the three games, I thought they played pretty well. Um, and I think you're seeing some consistency and some comfortability level with those kids playing, you know, playing at the level that we expect them to and keeping the game in front of them, but also coming up being physical. You know, we do a thing every every game where we talk about big hits. You know, it's a, it's a it's a hit that knocks the offensive player backwards. And uh, you know, we had 16 of those big hits last week, and like five of them came out of the secondary. You know, Eskridge has done a good job. He's probably the most you know the most consistent guy from a productive point of view. But the rest of the kids are uh, they've they've improved. They really have. So be another good test for us this weekend. Do you have a leader there? Would you say it's Eskridge? Right I think the leader. You know, the leaders in that room are really. Uh, you know, a combined group effort. Not really, there's no singular guy that steps out right now. Although I do see at times a guy like Esprit starting to lean into that. Another guy that, you know, shares time across the board is a good special teams player is Richie Jazeer. And he's as consistent as, as it gets as a person. And, uh, you know, I really like him in that room as well. driving back and forth uh, to the uh, television show. You know, when I saw, I think it was, uh, I don't know, it was early in the game, but it was Laverne Jacobs caught a pass and took it down the middle, ran away from everybody. And one of our, one of my early cutups, I was watching and I rewound it to see that jersey number. And I was hoping that maybe it was one of those guys that wasn't playing. Unfortunately, he's playing, he's a good player. I do think they're a talented bunch of kids that just, you know, haven't had as many opportunities yet. But they, they're getting them now, so we we'll have to do a good job against them. You often speak of education of a higher kind, and uh, the situation down in Miami with the Dolphins is changing every day, and I don't expect you to keep up on all the particulars, but is there a parallel or a teachable moment as it relates to bullying and harassment or, or being a man that, that you can convey to your kids? I, yeah, and I'd be stepping outside of my element because I'm not familiar with, with what's going on down there. I, I've heard I have heard a few of the things there, and I know it does relate to the bullying side of things. So to speak specifically on that one, I would be definitely far too ignorant. But to turn into a general, you know, a general type of a comment would be, yeah, you know, I've seen the bullying thing throughout my years as a coach, not necessarily in our locker rooms, but in the uh, classrooms of my children when we weren't playing well. You know, my son getting knocked up against the wall, my daughter, uh, you know, coming home and telling me what uh, one of the one of the kid's dad had to say after each game and it's a, it's really sad and it's really inappropriate but it's also part of life unfortunately you know as, as coaches you know when we have a chance to react to a situation and teach you know and, and take it as a learning or a teaching moment I think it's part of our responsibility you know even though we're coaching football and trying to get guys to hit people and be physical and all those things you know we're also uh, you know an extension of this university and, and for the for the greater good of education, I think you have to address those things with the kids. That's one that I haven't had an opportunity, you know, this week, you know, our theme was really, uh, you know, talking about Singh and his accomplishments as a Tuskegee Airman after he left here. The irony of an African American that was really held back and didn't get to play the game he loved so much and was, you know, really uh, treated wrong. And then when he finishes up at Syracuse, he goes and enlists to fight Hitler. I mean, what a story, what a hero. I mean, when you talk about a great American that came out of Syracuse University, um, you know, when I think of, of Lillian's story, that's, you know, that's, that's the teaching moment that we use this week, you know what I mean? But as those things come, you know, as those things come across, you know, I'm always looking for opportunities to use this, this, this football room as a classroom, because I love teaching, and, and I, really, I really believe, you know, this is far more about the individuals growing as young men as opposed to the wins and losses. You know, we know at the end of the day, if you're not winning enough, then I won't get to do those teaching opportunities. So, you know, we'll take advantage of every one we get and try to win more than we lose so we can keep teaching the kids the way we feel best. Scott, we know the, the penalties have frustrated you at times this year, and I'm just looking at the numbers. 62 for you guys, 34 for opponents. What do you kind of say to the guys, or how do you hone in on that? Is it, is it really just, do you just repeat discipline, discipline, discipline over again? Well, you do it. You know, you can't practice jumping off sides <laughs> and do a better job of it. 
So, you know, that, you know, if you look at them, we've had a lot of flinches that were penalties this year. We've had some physical penalties, which I can get through, physical effort penalties. We're playing a lot of, you know, a lot of young guys that haven't played a lot of football in the past, and, uh, you know, they're grabbing in the back. And, and some of those we've done a good job, but some of the blocking uh, penalties that we had early in the season in the kicking game, we've negated, we've drilled it, tried to put them in those uncompromising situations where they had to say, no moss, I can't block them anymore. Put your chest on them and let it roll. Um, so, you know, just continue to work on them. You know, and a lot of it has to do with the ability to control the game at your speed. It's one of the most underrated things in trying to teach a young man to play the game at the highest level. You know, we always talk about controlling the controllables within the program, you know, outside of football usually, but inside of football, to learn how to play with flow and balance and harmony uh, has a lot to do with your pre-snap discipline in my mind. And uh, it's a mindset, and the mindset is only taught through repetitions, you know, whether it be Ashton Broyles, Grizzly Esteem, or an offensive lineman. Know, and, or a quarterback, you know, with his cadence being rhythmic enough that the, the guys can anticipate things. And uh, those are some of the things that you've seen. We've been working hard at it, and we address it every week, and I put the pie chart up on that, that screen behind me, and we look at the, the penalties that we consider to be controllable, pre-snap penalties, and the ones that are post-snap, you know, part, parts of the fight. And uh, we address them each week, and then we try to move forward.